guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going for an overnight mission, solo two day dive trip out to some beautiful islands here in the Coromandel Peninsula in New Zealand. We've got the Senator all packed up with overnight gear, big esky, got a bit of food and ice and dive kit, all my sleeping gear there, all these big side wells just loaded up. It's all going to be kept nice and dry and safe. A couple of spare guns, even got a fishing rod. Heaps of fuel, and look at the weather today, it is mint. Water looks clean, blue skies, bugger all wind, bugger all swell. I'm absolutely pumped, so I'm gonna whack the boat in and let's get out and get into it. Can't wait. Have a nice small boat, easy launching by yourself. Woo, I'm pumped. All right, we've got about two hours left of incoming tide, so it should be good diving still for the next two hours. Uh, then I suspect it'll kind of die off for a few hours. We can park up, have some lunch, have a nice afternoon dive, maybe a night dive. See what this, uh, see what this day brings. So let's do it. Right, we've just made it into this little bay. It's hard to say, it's a little bit green the water, but um, we'll jump in, get into it. I'm gonna try to find the weed line here where the weed and kelp, kelp and rocky terrain meets the sand, and hopefully we can find some weed line species along there, John Dory, boarfish, basically anything. Yeah, and see what we can find for dinner. There's so much fish in New Zealand. Uh, I'm not gonna, you know, say I'm doing a survival challenge. It's gonna be very easy to get a feed for dinner, so yeah, we'll just be selective and find a nice, nice fish to cook up later. Um, and yeah, see what's going on here. Pretty green, but we'll see. <laughs> Let's jump in. New terrain, a new place I've never dove before. Always exciting. I load the spear gun. And start off sinking down into the kelp beds. There's some nice bouldery terrain below. Cracks and crevices under these boulders. Perfect terrain for crayfish. So I start with a nice few shallow dives. Scouting around looking for feelers. Antenna from the crayfish. No luck there. 
and I move on to the weed lines where the weed meets the sandy bottom below. Great place to find species such as John Dory, Boarfish and other species. No luck there either, so I move out to the point I'm trying to find some current. Good area where you can get some bait fish and then further large predatory fish such as kingfish hunting. But it's all very, very quiet in this area. Lovely diving, however. Nice big caves here as such. Very, very cool. I put my head back underwater and noticed the silhouette of a nice snapper just sleeping down below on the rocky bottom. I can't believe it hasn't spooked, so I duck dive very, very quietly. Drop down and get a shot right into the head. Snapper's out cold, and it's a secure shot. Fish floats to the surface, and I'm stoked. I've got a fish for dinner, and a beautiful snapper. Always good eating. shafts entered right through the brain and out the bottom and the fish is just stone cold dead. It's going to be great eating. Pretty happy with that to start the day off. But my spear's been sacrificed for that fish shooting straight into the rocky bottom below. No worries, I unload and get back onto the boat to try and scout some other areas around this beautiful group of islands. Oh, that was a nice little swim to start off with. Just checking those weed lines, bombing up and down, seeing if there's anything happening, but um, very, very, very quiet. Um, the only bait fish I saw was a school of uh, piper in close. Um, but yeah, just swimming into this little cave area here and just saw the snapper just asleep basically down on the bottom, on the rock. So um, yeah, just bombed down and smacked him right through the head, just lights out. Unfortunately, um, my shaft took a beating and uh, I don't know if you can see that but it's basically basically squared off on top but blunt um, should be alright for a bigger fish but um, yeah if not I've got my other, other gun as backup so yeah pretty cool pretty stoked that's fish for dinner we'll move on just keep trying some new spots and um, just enjoy this day what an amazing day it's just absolute mint blue skies everything so awesome try finding crayfish that'd be nice find a nice rock in deeper water catching some current so jump in to investigate. I find this beautiful gutter here running out between the rocks into deeper water. A perfect spot for some snapper to be holding. I peek over the ledge here and sure enough out in the distance I can see some nice snapper milling around. I decide to crack open a few kinna, sea urchin, throw them into the gutter and let them sit hoping to bring in these snapper for a closer look. A few minutes pass by, I sink back down and make my way along this rocky terrain, ready to peek over the ledge to see if the snapper have come in for a closer look, for a free feed of one of their favourite food, kinna. No luck, just a few smaller snapper. I try a few different approach angles, 
but nothing bigger coming in, so I just leave the smaller snapper. I've already got one for dinner. Just enjoying the scenes here. Incredible. Large schools of Koheru, Demisau. And this funny leather jacket coming in for a closer look. Very cool. Awesome fish. One last pair over the ledge. It's nice and clean. Good visibility. I see a few tails below. A few snapper, but decide not to take them. I've got two days of spear fishing, and I've already got a fish for dinner. The school of Koheru are very friendly. I love swimming around with bait fish and any fish really. It's so relaxing, all part of the experience while out spearfishing. Not all about sending steel into the fish. I sink down here onto the sandy, broken kelpie bottom. An awesome little spot for bait fish to congregate. I'm keeping my eye open for a John Dory. A perfect spot for one of these fish to be lurking ready to swallow one of these smaller bait fish. Two spot demisel, chilling. A few juvenile trevally out in the distance but nothing sizeable. Just such a relaxing experience. Got to love free diving and spear fishing. I swim further along the coast Still on the hunt for a crayfish. Big gutters here with a few cracks off the side. Very fishy little spot, but no crayfish seen. No snapper lurking. A very healthy little reef here. So much fish life. Huge school of the two spot demisel. Again. Just sinking into these schools, looking back up at them, it's such an awesome experience. So relaxing and good practice if you want to learn how to hold your breath longer. Just take time to look around, checking out the sea floor, sea life, and you'll be surprised how much time you spend underwater when you're not on high alert looking for fish. Oh guys, a bit more fishy at that spot, um, heaps of kohiru around, a couple of those snapper down below. There was no really point in, in sparing one, got all afternoon to dive and tomorrow morning got that fish for dinner. I will spare a couple more fish to take home with me but um, that's enough for today really. Um, I don't really need more so I'm just going to keep pushing, it's pretty green just here, the tide's changed. Um, I would like a crayfish with my dinner, with my fish, so I think we will heading closer to the spot where we're going to set up the boat camp for tonight and um, yeah, have a hunt around. Hopefully find a, a nice crayfish, so let's do that and uh, yeah, before we know it the sun's going down, so get this boat dried and tent set up, looking forward to it.
was just beelining it towards the cray spot and I can just see it on the surface out here. It is absolutely alive, heaps of birds working. Fish on the surface, so I just thought, hey, pretty nice to have a bit of uh, sashimi before the, the main tonight, so I'll gear up. I'm gonna kick and spear gun to the front of the boat, so I'll just do a drift dive through the school, hopefully pick up a trevally, a kahawai, or uh, yeah, not sure if I wanna take a kingi today and you know have it in the bin overnight. It'll be nice and cold. We'll see what swims by, and I'm, uh, and I'm sure we'll find something for a sashimi entree, so. Let's do it, let's jump in. It looks like the size of a rugby field, just alive with fish, so exciting. Right, got this set up. I've, I absolutely despise float lines, but I've got that connected to the bottom of the gun there. I have the gun set up, ready to go. This just comes around the back, tied onto the fairly at the front. And uh, yeah, as soon as we find that school, it's just out here still, peel off the side, too easy. Let's go kill something. After chasing these schools of fish around, I finally get my chance and peel off the side of the boat as I'm close enough. I can see the schools of Kahawai down below. These fish move fast, so I have to act quickly, diving straight down. Sinking down into the gloom, I'm still looking for kingies beneath, but not seeing any. I see the opportunity to take a nice Kahawai, line up the shot and get a shaft through this fish. These fish have very soft flesh, so you really need a good holding shot in the upper half of the body where the flesh is tougher, away from the belly. The shot looks good, it's holding, and I land the fish. Stoked. Got my sashimi for dinner. Hey, bro. What's going on? Oh, I've got my sashimi. Nice, nice kawaii. Big one, so that's easy, that's done. And uh, just jumping on the boat and look who, look who's popped up. Oh, <laughs> Kerry Flowers. Hey everyone. <laughs> what are you doing out here in the middle of nowhere, mate? Oh, mate, we are staying on Great Mercury Island and we're trying to eradicate the Argentine ant from there. Yeah. Um, and in our spare time, we get to do a little bit of spear fishing. So yeah, come for a bit of an adventure. What do you guys got over there? Uh, we've got a couple of traps. And you got a couple. Oh, nice, that's what I was looking for. A couple of a couple of fat cullies. Oh, yeah, yeah. With a bit of sashimi. Beauty. Be pretty good. <laughs> Middle of nowhere almost. I thought it must be some crazy guys out here on the kayak. I thought I thought they were wearing uh, uh, wetsuits, and yeah, sure, they, they sure were. So, <laughs> nah, alright, boys. I might go. Um, Go find some craze, hopefully. Oh, that was a pretty hard case seeing Kerry, Kerry out there. Good stop and chat. Um, yeah, we had a good chat. Planning a mission, so we'll do a collab soon. Um, see what the weather's doing in the next month or so. Hopefully, we can get up to the Kings or somewhere epic. But um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Head up north or whatever. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, I've just tucked into the coast here. Going to anchor up and have one last look for some craze. Fingers crossed, otherwise yeah we've got that kahawai and a snapper for dinner, a few other bits and pieces I've brought along so we can make a good feed, so all good. No complaints here. I'll jump in along a piece of coast, I found a few craze before and it's not long to I find a familiar crack, a familiar hole spot a cray just sitting in here. It's not very big so I just give him a tickle and move on my way. I'm sure I'll find some more. Nice terrain everywhere. Lots of 
crevices and horizontal cracks like this, deep holes and swim throughs, caves, lovely terrain. Sinking down into this dark, dark corridor here. Pretty cool. You can see a few feelers further in. Too deep and dangerous to go in there by myself. I just keep hunting and I know I'm going to find some more soon and spot some feelers down below. Have a nice breathe up and make my way down. Just coming in slowly here. Sinking down into this crevice and up in here there's a whole bunch of craze you can see there. Feelers sticking out. There's about three or four craze and two of them look legal. I go for the biggest looking crate on the bottom here. I go for a hard and fast grab. It's quite a deep crevice here and it's a bit of a tussle pushing the crate back and forth until I can rip it out. Awesome. Good size cray. I'm pretty stoked. And that's dinner. Woohoo! Stoked. I get the cray into the catch bag and I think I've found a nice area here. Looking down, nice kelpy, rocky terrain with large cracks running parallel onto the sand and I spot a few feelers under this little ledge here. I get back to the surface, get a really nice breathe up and go in for the attack. sink down here through the kelp, kind of got disorientated here, but then I find the craze sitting right under this ledge here, looking for the biggest one, there he is, deep under here, and I just go for the grab once again, you've got to be fast with these crayfish, especially if they've got a big crack to back up into, a quick tussle, and I've got a nice buck cray, beautiful cray. Happy days. I've got a couple of nice crays now, so it's time to get back to the boat and move in for a nice afternoon dinner, set up camp for the night. Of course, it's very hard to get out of the water for me, so on the way to the bay to set up camp, I see a rock just breaking the surface, so I can't resist the urge to jump in. There's a few snapper below, nothing too sizeable, a nice kingfish swims through, a bit out of range and acting very scarce, it's a good kingy, I'd estimate about 20 kilo. I crack open a few more kinna, throw them off in the hope of a bigger snapper to come through but just hundreds of these blue mau mau. Nonetheless an awesome experience, always lovely to dive with these vibrant fish. Got our craze, awesome. Stoked as. So, this one, nice big buck, beautiful cray. Awesome. This is a female, good size as well. So yeah, three crays, absolutely stoked as. Have one of these smaller ones for dinner and take this one home. Look at that. Ready. made it into this amazing little bay. Conditions just mint. Came in for his channel here and what an amazing afternoon. Sun's just gonna start coming in down over there. Get this boat cleaned up, gear off, get dry, get warm, and then let's let's cook up. Looking forward to it. First night on the boat. Hopefully there's no mosquitoes around. 
Right, oh, warm, some clothes on, got the red bands. Hey, no mozzie's gonna get me tonight. Yeah, just had a nice tidy up. Everything's all dried down. We've got the bungs down here, so no water's getting into these scupper flaps. Yeah, I'm just gonna sleep down here later. Tarp over the bow rails and over the motor, we'll figure it out later. But uh, let's go chop some fish up and cray for dinner. All right, first up, we're just gonna do a quick uh, kahawai sashimi, a bit of raw fish, wasabi, bit of kicking in soy sauce. Too good, let's do that first. We've got our fish in here, we've got our kahawai, a little blue mau mau, and we've got our snapper, so let's get some kahawai underway. There's a lot of meat on these kahawai, so I'm just gonna take one fillet, should be more than enough for a starter meal for me. All right, so we're just gonna come there behind the gill plate. Backbone. Fresh as it gets. All right, there we go. Kahawai fillet. Put that one back in ice. Now, kawaii does make fantastic bait, but it's fantastic eating also. So if you haven't tried it raw, it's definitely one of my favorites. A good amount of flavor, very soft, and yeah, just melts in your mouth, so get into it. Got my filleting knife, so dive knife it is. We'll just come down the middle, down the side of the spine. Same on this piece, feed the fishies and then we've got our two kind of nice big pieces of fillet. Now it's just a case of slicing that up nice and thin, little pieces and uh, we're into it. And there we have it, the good old humble cowboy. Beautiful. Bit of kicker man. Wasabi. Just mix it in there really. A good squirt. I like a bit of kick. Taste test. I prefer to leave it one day, Kawai. Softens up even more, but no complaints. Mm. Alright, I'll chew through this and then it's um, snapper sandwiches for dinner. So we'll get that going shortly. Almost forgot, squeeze a lemon. Righto, that was amazing. Now, now time for the main event. Crayfish and snapper. Got my kitchen set up here. So much space in this boat. I actually just love it. There's just, I've got dry storage under there. I've got pockets there, 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 there. Everything's just, there's just so much space and I've got no organization going whatsoever. So anyways, here's our kitchen. Gonna do like a nice salad. Got a white death. Got a few herbs and the good old butter and salt, that's all we really need. And uh, whip something up. Gonna get the cob grill going. This thing's a weapon, perfect for boats. They don't get hot on the underside or outside, so you can put them on top of the esky, anywhere. So, perfect for boats. If you haven't seen my episodes before or a cob grill in action, they just take one of these pre built, it's got fire loaders built in. Um, the coal briquette thing, whack that in the middle and that thing just cooks away for about an hour and a half it's pretty impressive, you can cook a lot of food on it so um, it's going to be more than enough heat to cook up a bit of snapper and cray so yeah, better get this thing lit and let's, let's get it going Alright, 
briquettes away. Once that's all white, that that fuel's burnt off and that's safe to put some food on. So. There's our lovely snapper fillet. That should be enough for dinner. Now you've just got one little spine there you need to remove. I might just do this into nice chunks. And lovely. Get a very, very nice snapper ready for fish sammies for dinner. Right, we've got our cray tail separated from the body, and then it's just a down the middle. Not a big cray, but legal, and it's going to be tasty nonetheless. That poetry belt, and we will just cook that cray just like that in the the little barbie. Right, briquette's gone white. We can chuck our pan on now. Wok, whatever you want to call it. Just sits on there. afternoon this is the goods that cray is going to take a bit longer so that's dessert I think the veggies ready got a bit of capsicum red onion cucumber salt lemon best food mayonnaise of course Butter, of course, and a uh, bit naughty today. We've got some white death. Sometimes you just got to have some soft white death because it's bloody good. And uh, yeah, can't eat healthy 24 7. Well, you can, but it's a bit boring. Oh yeah, look how soft it is. Beautiful. That's cooked. It's falling apart. Straight on the semi. Touch more salt. Just a lemon. Oh, we have a fresh snapper. Semi, sundowner. Oh good. Life's good. Taste test. Mm. Yeah. Wow. That snapper is soft. Too good. All right, that cob's really cranking now. I reckon that craze done. Let's have a look. Hear it sizzling away. Oh, yeah, that's a tasty bit of cray. 
This is living man, awesome. I love this stuff, I just love being outdoors. Just, guys, whatever you like to do the most, just do as much as you can of it, life is so short. Just get out there, do it. Jeez, it's, it's over before you know it. So if you're into camping and outdoors, just get out there as much as you can. Just push through those excuses and make things happen because just like that, it's all over. So anyway, I just thought I'd share some advice. Let's eat this cray. Wow, it's really good. Should just pull out. Yep. Perfection. Do the snappers. And wow. I'll just dip this in that. Dip that in that good butter. Oh yeah. Bloody good. I haven't had cray for so long. It's delicious. Mm. Right guys, well, I've got my <laughs> my tent up, um, whatever that is, it's basically a bit of a shambles, <laughs> first time camping out in the boat, I thought this fly would somehow work, it's a bit uh, shit really, <laughs> no way else to put it, I've got this end uh, held up with my spear, spear from one of the spear guns, it's propped up on the chili bin, oh, it's even moved, which it in there um, but yeah got my bed down there lucky it's a nice night um, I think probably just get one of those swags it'd be a bit easier but uh, anyways it's gonna be a fun night it's absolutely still beautiful so I'm gonna get a little jet ball going get a hot drink going and uh, yeah nice early night I'm pretty buggered so see you in the morning Good morning. Absolute stunning morning. I cooked up some sausages last night on the, the last of the charcoal in here. So just reheating them now on the little, little gas stove. And uh, yeah, that's freaky. I'm not even to put this lid on, eh? There we go. Charcoal cob into a gas cob now. Beauty. <laughs> Bit dodgy. Should be right. Alright. Oh that works surprisingly well. Gone for a, a tea actually. Try and get that heart rate down. I think I'm gonna see something good well hope I do anyways so I had a look at my spare from yesterday and um, that explains a few shots on the last few trips as well I thought it was punching out to the right and if you can look there hard to see on the GoPro but where's that flopper middle there 
it does taper out to the right slightly. It doesn't take much in a bench shaft um, to put a shot massively off so any slight little bend or niggle in a, in a shaft make sure you check them before each dive trip because it can really affect it especially the further you're shooting the further you shoot the more you're going to notice it so I've got another spare shaft here I'm just going to change the Dyneema over to this one quickly rig that up cup of tea and we're getting into it An absolutely beautiful morning. I make my way out towards the ocean side, trying to find a bit more current. Not much happening inside the bay. I get out to one of the points and it's starting to come alive. Early morning, there's fish buzzing around everywhere. Kingies below. Everything quite erratic. Just not quite closing the gap on that kingfish. I find this huge school of tiny bait. Young fish is awesome. Wicked to see them dart about, shimmering. Beautiful scenes. I dive down to a pressure point here. There's Mau Mau, Sweep, all sorts of fish. Kingies buzzing in the background. The kingfish just acting a bit more wary. I just can't quite close the gap on them. They're not too big anyways, they're probably only just legal. Snapper buzzes in here, can't quite close the gap on that either. Sink down, hiding in the kelp here, trying to lure a snapper or kingfish back in. I keep trying all sorts of techniques, different spots, but nothing seems to be producing. But awesome scenes. Lovely way to start the morning. So, time to get back on the boat and try another spot. Ooh, nice little morning swim. A few snapper about, but um, whew, didn't really want to pull the trigger. I was hoping for a little bit of a bigger fish to come in, so let them go. Nice king, few kingies came through, but um, not very big either. So, yeah, just a good warm up for the morning. I'm going to shoot out now before this wind picks up, try and see if I can get myself a kingie out of this rock and then yeah we'll just kind of slowly make our way back in it is supposed to pick up all that wind so yeah don't want to get into some shit so let's keep moving After trying a few spots, I finally find the right area. Fish on the surface feeding, birds work in the area, clean water, current. And as I dive under, I'm greeted with these incredible scenes. Huge amounts of bait fish, blue mau mau, two spot demisau, koheru, kahawai, it's all go. It's only a matter of time before I see some kingfish, surely. After a few dives down, I finally get my eyes on a kingfish, sinking down on this drop, sinking down into the schools of Demisau. I catch a kingy out of the corner of my eye, coming in. Doesn't quite come close enough, so I can't close the gap. Then I'm a bit restricted with my gun connected to the boat. I dive down once again a few minutes later, and this time, this kingfish comes in too close. I line it up, go for the kill shot, and the shaft goes right through its head. Unfortunately, slightly too low, penetrating through the jaw. Unfortunately, this means the kingfish is barely injured and has got full strength and power. The fish tails hard, pounding into the depths as I swim for the surface to gasp for air. I've got a very good secure holding shot by the looks of it, so I'm just trying to winch the fish up to the top. Every time I pull it up, the fish dives down, and it's a battle back and forth. Blue Mau Mau here circling the fish. 
I've seen a big bronze whaler shark only five minutes before, so I'm hoping it doesn't come in for a free feed. I just can't make any ground with the fish, just fighting, fighting hard. And my worst fears come true as a big bronze whaler comes barreling in for a free feed. It's a good sized shark and it looks very keen and adamant on getting a feed. Circles the kingy a few times, I'm still trying to winch it up, but then the shark gets hold of the tail and then proceeds to swallow the whole fish almost. And with a few shakes of the head, it just breaks the fish in half. Amazing the teeth on these fish and the power. All I'm left with is the kingy head, and then the shark comes back for more. I can't believe it. This fish is hungry. I think it gets a taste of the spear and doesn't like it. I don't muck around and swim for the boat. sharks. I saw one cruising around at the start and thought oh well doesn't look too agitated just cruising. Whacked this kingfish unfortunately just a bit low and um, thing had full power just charging away just causing a scene and sure enough this shark just came in hot. <sighs> Didn't even have time to pull it up and just munched it, ripped it right in half. Mate joined him. This is all I've got to, to show for it. Blimey hell, it's a nice little fish as well, that's all that's left, might better get a little bit of meat off there. Bastards, I don't think I'm going to have much luck staying around here with these sharks even if I shoot another one so I guess I'm going to have to move on. Bugger, there's a few good kingies around. Oh, we'll, we'll head in shallow and then make our way along back to base. I try one last spot, hoping for that kingie, but with the tide changing, hitting that slack tide, everything goes a bit quiet. Fish hanging deeper. As you can see, I peer down this ledge here. It's a nice little snapper mid water. I look around for a bigger one, lose my chance, and the fish swims off. I spear another little fish and it seems like it's my day for sharks. They just keep on coming in. Another big bronze whaler came barreling in after I shot this fish. It's very interested in what's on the end of my... circling me. Very agitated. You can see it here bombing up from the depths ready to approach and attack what's on the surface. I'm hoping it doesn't bite my spear gun and rip it in half and take it down to the depths. And after a back and forth scuffle, the shark finally disappears into the depths. One last look for a cray. Just heaps of small crays like this around. Good to see a big nest full though. And that was a wrap. I think Tangaroa had spoken. It's enough seafood, enough time in the water, and what an awesome two days camping and diving it was. Awesome first time camping on the boat and something I'll be repeating more often. Cheers for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed that Primal Pursuit mission. If you liked it please give me a thumbs up, it helps with the algorithms for YouTube, enabling more people to see these videos. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting subscribe if you want to see more content, heaps of spearfishing action to come. And if you want to support my channel and my YouTube journey, head over to primalpursuit.co.nz. I'll leave a link in the description. There you can check out some of my Primal Pursuit merch. 
it's a great way to support my channel and you get to take home some gear too. Anyways, I hope everyone got something out of that video or just kicked back and enjoyed the underwater world, one of my favourite places to be. Safe diving everyone and I'll see you soon. Cheers.